Hi guys. So in the last lecture we looked at the joint density of um, um, Brownian motion with drift and its maximum under the wrist neutral measure and we saw that the joint density basically is given by this formula right here. So just to recap basically we had a probability space and under this probability space we had defined a, a Brownian motion given by W tilde of T and then we basically further define a process W hat of T which was equal to W tilde of T plus alpha T and we said that under P tilde this basically this process has a drift right and then we basically define the max maximum value that Brownian motion takes between time 0 and T as max of 0 less than equal to T is an equal to capital T of W hat of T, okay? So then we, we computed the joint density of M hat of capital T and W hat of capital T under the risk neutral measure and this is what we got. So today what we would like to do is we would like to use this joint density function and compute the value of a barrier option, okay? So let's see how we can use this to compute the price of a barrier option. Okay, so let's understand what is a barrier option first. So let's assume that on the x-axis we have time, on the y-axis we have the price of the stock, and at time zero the stock basically starts at S0. Okay, and let's first consider a plain vanilla European call option, okay, which expires at time capital T. So this is time capital T. Now during the life of the European call option, the underlying stock, let's assume that basically takes this kind of a path and finally ends up at um, some value S of capital T. Okay? And let's also assume that somewhere over here we have a strike price K. Okay? So basically the, stock, uh, the, the option expires in the money we're dealing with the European call option. And ST basically is greater than K, so the option expires in the money, okay? So we all know what the payoff of a European call option is. The payoff of a European call option is given by ST minus K plus, okay? Which is the maximum of ST minus K and zero. And in this case, since the, the stock basically ends up above the, the strike price, the holder of the call option basically gets ST minus K. Okay, so plain vanilla, simple European call option. Now, let me actually introduce what a barrier option is. So in a barrier option, the, the, of the payoff of the option can be either that of a call or a put, okay? So we can have the same payoff in a barrier option as that of a European call, but with an added feature that in case of a barrier option, we have something called a barrier, okay? Let's say barrier is at a level B, and what happens is the holder of the option, if the underlying stock basically ever breaches this barrier, okay? So basically, initially the stock, the value of the stock is below the barrier and during the life of the option, if the stock price ever breaches the barrier, then the option knocks out, okay? And we call this kind of an option as out, uh, up and out call option, okay? Call option because the payoff at expiration basically is that of a call and up and out because the stock has to go up, cross the barrier for it to be knocked out. Okay, that's why it's called up and out. So what happens is if the underlying basically crosses the barrier, uh, the option basically uh, gets terminated right there. Okay, so the holder of the option basically doesn't have any claim to um, the, any future cash flows, okay? The option basically kind of becomes dead right then or it knocks out, okay? And if during the life of the option, if the underlying stock never crosses the barrier, okay, then the option stays alive and we get at expiration the payoff which is equal to ST minus K plus, okay? So very simple instrument. Um, but the, the difference between a barrier option and a, uh, a European call option is a European call option only, uh, the value of the European call option only dependent on, dependent on the value of the stock at expiration, 
it didn't really care which path the stock took to reach that um, expiration value okay but in case of barrier option the path that the stock has taken plays a critical role in uh, figuring out what the payoff of the call is going to be because if the underlying instrument basically crosses the barrier then the stock basically gets knocked out right so hence Barrier option basically are path dependent options, okay? Whereas the plain vanilla European call option is not path dependent, okay? So there are many other variations of this uh, up and out call option. You can have a barrier below the stock price and in that case, stock basically has to go below the barrier to get knocked out. That would be called down and out. And if the payoff is called, then it will be called the down and out uh, call option, which is again basically a part dependent option. Uh, the other variation where we can have up and in, in which initially basically stock is uh, not live, and basically it has to go up, uh, go above a barrier to get knocked in. Okay, and if it never crosses the barrier, basically option has, expires worthless. Okay, so initially in up and in option basically ha has no value it has to cross a barrier in order to kick in okay and if it never crosses the barrier then option never kicks in and it expires worthless okay and similarly we can have down and in um, options as well so these are various kinds of uh, barrier options to consider okay so today we're going to actually talk about um, up and out call option um, and we're going to see how we're going to price an up and out call option. Okay. Um, so let's do that next.